Let's see then. Take this bow, go and stand in position over there. We can start. And another thing, put on this arm guard. Without it, you could flay your forearm with a bowstring, so be sure to wear it. Thank you, Captain. Save the thanks. Get in position. Now concentrate. Oh, ain't exactly the weapon of choice of a knight, but it can come in very handy. You've got two bandits coming at you from a distance. Shoot one in the eye, drop your bow, and draw your sword on the other. Emperor Charles, God rest him, encouraged his subjects to learn archery. He even organized contests in Prague. You would have gotten far there, holding nothing like a piece of firewood. But enough talk. There's the target. Try and hit it. Draw the bow, aim, and release. Try to get a feel for the rhythm. Inhale on the draw. Hold your breath for a moment. Then release the string. No jerky movements. Just let the string slide out of your fingers. As if you were about to draw it back more. It's all one movement. Arrow aiming at the target, flying at it. Shoot away. What you have there is a training bow. The arrow drops quickly. Once you've trained a bit, you can get yourself a better one, and then those arrows will fly so fast you won't see them. Don't forget the arm drop. Once you've mastered the bow a bit, you won't need it anymore. That's it, then. I don't like to say it, but it wasn't that bad. I don't know why you're wasting your time, Sir Bernard. Nothing will come of him anyway, and at the first sign of trouble, he'll run away like any other cowardly peasant. After all, he's done it before. What did you say? Calm down, boy. Keep in mind who you're talking to. A braggart who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Now you've really done it. You'll go to the stocks for that. Calm yourself, Sir Bernard. If the blacksmith's boy feels he can prove himself, then let him try. Do you think you can beat me? Well? Any time. Very well. If you defeat me, I'll give you my bow. If you lose, you'll have to pay up. Do you even have any coin? I don't have enough. Then you'll owe me or work it off. Let's get to it. Didn't expect that. Probably just wasn't your day, sir. I told you I have a heavy hand ever since I fell off that horse during the last hunt. What are you grinning about, boy? I think you owe me a little payback. How about a sword fight at the arena? If you like. Sir Hans, is this necessary? Sir Hanish has already had words about you fighting with your subjects. He explicitly told me. I know what he told you. You can just tell him I didn't listen to you. So what's it going to be, blacksmith? If we must. Excellent, then let's go. You'll pay for that! 
The better of me this time, blacksmith. I must be having an off day. Are you all right, sir? Don't worry your mangy head about me, peasant. We'll see each other again soon enough. You can keep my bow. It's best years are behind it anyway. Better hope his lordship hasn't taken it badly. I hope he has. Watch it, boy. A few of my men have won fights against him before and never had a problem. But you could be the first. Now go to the rat house. The bailiff's waiting for you there. All right, Captain.
That's all for today. Good day to you. Good luck to you. Jesus Christ be praised. I'm to put myself under the bailiff's command. Ah, so you're the young man Sir Radzig appointed? Yes. Very well. Sir Radzig asked me to test you a little, and as it happens, you've come at the right time. We've a few disputes to settle. It seems some of your former neighbors have been acting quite inappropriately. I was hoping having one of their own on the town watch might help sort things out. You can count on me, Bailiff. You're certainly bold. I like that. Have you been to see Captain Bernard? I have. He trained me and then Sir Hans Capon challenged me to a duel. I see. Sir Hans Capon likes to measure his strength against others. But be careful, Henry. Noblemen are quick to anger, and you don't need that kind of trouble. Well, anyway, you're going to assist my town guard. Come to the church in the afternoon. Yaroslav the Watchman, Nightingale they call him, will wait for you there. He'll show you around the town and teach you a little about keeping the peace. And you need to stop by the armory to pick up some gear. Yes, Bailiff. I want to learn to read. Who should I go and see? There's a retired scribe in Ujits. He could teach you. Master Bailiff, is there anything of interest going on here? Nothing of interest to me, thank Christ. May the Lord watch over you. I was told to pick up a kit here. I'd say there's not much room for improvement. You already look as good as any vassal, but your wish is my command. If my memory serves me, you're entitled to a helmet, a gambeson, and a club. That's all. You want a kiss and a hug as well? I mean equipment. It's quite enough for patrolling the town. You're there to stop trouble, not start it.
Here I am. My name is Henry. We're supposed to go on patrol together? I see you're kitted out. Ready to get going. I'm Nightingale. Aren't you that lad the mill wench brought here on a cart? Teresa. Yes, she rescued me. She turned up with Captain Robot and his knights. All honour to the girl. She has bigger balls than most men. Tell me, how did you pay her back? Well, I, um... I thanked her. That's not much, is it? You should go and see her when you get a chance. So how did you end up in the service of the bailiff? I wanted to enter the service of Saradzik, but he sent me here to learn. And learn you will. You're lucky, lad. Saradzik must like you. Most lords would have just sent you on your way. Come with me, Henry. We'll patrol the town and then check on the taverns to make sure they lock up in the evening. I'm ready. Don't forget, I'm supposed to try you out and, with the help of God, teach you something. So I expect you to deal with any misconduct yourself. I'll make sure you don't do anything too stupid. Let's go. This is our church, St. Matthew's. serves not only as the house of God, but as the crypt of the lords of Lydna, our masters. The grave digger lives right round the corner. The priest, too. Our parish priest. Ah, a man shouldn't speak ill about servants of the Lord. This is our rat house. Pretty big, eh? The bailiff and his hands live there, and our maestro proto notarius. The scribe. And the jailhouse. You don't want to see the inside, not even as a guard. Naturally, we have an executioner too, but he doesn't live in town. That wouldn't be proper, as I'm sure you know. He lives by Gallows Hill, the other side of the creek. This pillory was brand new in autumn, and two people have already been rotten on it. Swordsmith is here. What the hell is going on here now? Go and check it out, Henry. If you won't go to the church, go back to your people. What are you two screeching about? Stop making such a ruckus. About time you turned up. This filthy beggar thinks. My name is Jane. No one cares what your name is. This filthy beggar thinks she can come and stink in front of my shop. I want you to get rid of her. What's the problem here? This is my shop, and I won't have beggars sitting on my doorstep. Let her go and squat in the square. She won't be in anyone's way there, and there's plenty of folk to beg from. Must you sit here, of all places? Yes, I do. Why? Folk drive me away wherever I sit. I can't keep walking all day and night. Can't you show us some Christian charity, Armourer? What? Have you any idea how much I've given away in alms, even to this witch only yesterday? Is that true? Might be. Might not. Did you get any alms or not? Yes. From the armourer here? I don't know. And even if I did, that was yesterday, and my belly's empty again today. That's true. What would you know about it? We're both good Christians, aren't we? We should each give something to the poor soul. And what then? Then Jane will be on her way. Immediately. 
King Solomon now, are you, lad? Fine. Fine. Have it your way. God bless you, and, and you too, citizen. I won't be a nuisance no more, really. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Jesus. You're as bad as each other. Your old neighbours are living here now. It's a bit of a shithole. Even so, you should be thankful to Zahanush. If the town burghers got their way, your folk wouldn't be let anywhere near the town. And now our people aren't too happy with him. Some fools are even calling for Zahanush to finally hand the fiefdom over to the young lord, Sir Hans Capon. Sir Hans's father, old Sir Yeshke, may God rest his soul, kept it till he was an old man. Then he retired from it. First to Moravia, then to eternity. Sir Hanush is managing the fiefdom until Sir Hans comes of age. They're related by blood somehow. The same great-great-grandfather or some such. The time's coming soon enough when the estates have to be handed over. These affairs often end in conflict. I hope we have nothing like that here. This square here, it looks much better during the markets. Then it's filled to bursting with folk from all around. We've also got the baker's shop here, and that mad merchant Wolfram Pruder. Pruder has a pretty daughter, but he keeps her on a short reign, which the young bucks are none too happy about. I heard he even keeps the poor lass locked up at home all day. Look here. See that filthy beggar? By Christ, I'll show the bastard. Comfortable, are we? Arms, please, sir. Who do you take me for? Are you stupid or just insolent? Well, what's the matter? Stupid, then. There's no begging allowed here, so pick up your stinking arse and haul it somewhere else. Who am I bothering here? Me. Us. Everyone. If Sir Hanu saw you here, he'd take a whip to you. All right, all right, I'm going. Damn beggars. You offer them a helping hand, and they want the whole arm. It's not like the rules aren't clear. Beggars belong at the church. There's one alehouse here on the market square, the Trader's Tavern. The other's up by the gate. We'll be going there later. Let's move along to the inner bailey. Here's the forge. The blacksmith has some trouble and he's not working at the moment, but his apprentice is standing in for him tolerably. I hear you're a blacksmith's apprentice too. You lot could help if needed, couldn't you? Us? What do you mean? You and your master, or your father, whoever taught you. They... What is it, lad? My father was the master blacksmith. He was killed in Skalix. Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Thank you. 
So am I. My papa died not long ago. Of course, it was old age got him. That's not the same, but I know a little how you feel. Rate fiefdom is pretty big. Naturally, it starts here by the town and continues along the Sasau River all the way to Kohelnitz. Then there's Gallows Hill, lots of farmhouses scattered around. Neuhof, Merhoyed. Master Smill is in charge of Sir Hanush's stables. He's by far his best vassal. It's all a bit complicated for a newcomer, I suppose. This lord here, that lord there, this exemption here, that right there. Exemptions from exemptions, rights to half of something, and so on. It'll take you a year to make head or tail of it. This tower was only half the size when I was a young man. Sir Hanush had it extended and made into an armory. God be with you, Benesh. How goes it? Well enough, Nightingale. It's quiet today. Good. Where's Moimir, anyway? Isn't he supposed to be here with you? Ah, yes. He hasn't turned up yet. Oh, I see. Now, where might he have got to, then? I don't know. You don't know, eh? Let me tell you something. When the bailiff finds out Moimir's slacking off, he'll be in serious shit. And being a friend of his, you wouldn't want that, would you? No. So it's better if I deal with it and we leave the bailiff out of it, right? Um, yes, I suppose so. So where is he? Uh, in the tavern. He was thirsty, so he... Went for an ale. We know how that goes. Come on, Henry. Let's go and find that idler, and you'd better talk some sense into him. What the fuck are you doing here when you're supposed to be on the gate? Uh. Move your carcass and go and guard the gate. Uh, I... Not a word. Get moving. You're lucky it was me found out, not the bailiff, or God forbid, Captain Bernard. Out! Come and sit with me, Henry. Let's have a drink. Here you are. That fool got me all worked up. Shouldn't we be on patrol instead of drinking? You're eager, aren't you? Don't worry, even watchmen are entitled to a break. Except the ones on the gate and the tower, of course. But that's enough about that. Let's not let it spoil our day. Listen, since we're sitting here anyway, how about a little game? Why not? We'll see whose side Lady Duck is on.
One beer for me. This will be the one. Finished. Money, money, money. Just one more thing and we're done for the night. Ringing the end of the day and closing the taverns. Isn't it still a bit early? I don't know how it was in Scarlet, but here in Rate we close up at this hour. Except, of course, during fairs and big festivals. Then we don't close at all. I see. Should I go and ring the bell? If you wouldn't mind, the bell is hanging outside the rat house. Ring three times, then go to the trader's tavern by the market square and make sure the innkeeper closes up. I'll do that. Before I forget, it's forbidden to walk in Rate at night without a torch. Here. Take this one. And the canon of St. Wenceslas in Olomouc was so drunk, <laughs> he dragged the pig 
to the market square, saddled it up, <laughs> and rode it out of the town gate. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 we can we could see we could see that this wasn't going to end well. So Sir Peter and I rode off to look for the good cannon on his pig. <laughs> Did you find him? <laughs> we tracked the filthy beast down to a sty beyond Cronau. I mean the beast with a tonsure on its head. <laughs> we never found the real pig, but the Reverend was sound asleep in the pigsty. <laughs> <laughs> Birds of a feather stick together. <laughs> it seems the same goes for pigs and planets. <laughs> <laughs> a toast, gentlemen, to pigs and planets. God save them, bacon. <laughs> Sir Hans, forgive my intrusion, but I need... Oh, but to... what? You uh, want to join us? Want to <laughs> buy us around? <laughs> I'm afraid we don't drink with peasants. You're not in your village now, boy. No, sir. <laughs> Curfew's been rung. The alehouse is closing. <laughs> Nothing closes while I'm sitting here. If that's all, you're dismissed. Are you out of your mind, lad? You can't cross his lordship. He's got a temper like a bear with gut egg. If I was you, I'd get lost before he shows it. The bailiff instructed me to close the tavern at the proper hour. He doesn't want anyone disturbing the peace after curfew. The bailiff? The bailiff can kiss my ass. I trust you haven't forgotten who's the rightful lord of Ratte. No, it's Sir Hannes. Oh, is he here? What is he hiding under the table, maybe? <laughs> no, then what he wants isn't worth a fart in a bathhouse. And besides, he's only in charge till I grow up. <laughs> Which clearly hasn't happened yet. Enough. You can't talk to me like that. I'm a nobleman. Come now, sirs. You're not going to fight here, are you? We most definitely are. This yokel needs to be taught his place. Bugger! Teach that insolent cop a lesson! Beat him down! That'll show him! Crucifix! What in the name of Christ is happening here? Well, answer me, damn you! This peasant insulted me. I had to teach him a lesson. By rolling around in the mud like a hog? That's a fine example of noble conduct! Sir Hannes, the bailiff ordered me to Silence! Take... You shut your mouth and thank your lucky stars that you are Radzig's ward! Have you gone out of your mind, raising your hand to a nobleman? And you, Hans, how many times have I told you that drinking with your subjects might be good for their morale, but it's bad for your honor? <sighs> you spend all your days drinking and chasing wenches, which wouldn't matter if you paid any attention at all to your duties. And now we see what that leads to. Tomorrow? You will go with me to a hearing. Some landowners have asked me to settle a dispute. It'll be an excellent lesson for you. I had planned to go hunting, but if you think listening to the pointless gripes of a bunch of old fools will benefit me, so be it. Oh, hunting. Well then, Your Grace, I'll tell you what. You can go hunting. Really? Oh, naturally. Who am I to deprive the young Lord Capon of his sport? And... You can take Henry here as your page. Him? Absolutely not. You'll do as I've commanded. It's time you learned how to lead people, and not just in drinking and brawling. Now get out of my sight. Sir, I have responsibilities to the bailiff. Not anymore. Your responsibilities now are the Lord Capon. It's time you learned how to behave in the presence of nobility. Let's go. Tell the kitchen I'm hungry. It's been a long journey. Lovely and warm. We waited long enough. Jesus.
Jesus Christ, why are you lurking here? Look at the state you're in. What's that dog you have here? He looks familiar. Don't you remember him? It's Mart, the butcher's dog from Scalitz. Ah, of course. When I went back to bury my parents, he was guarding his master's dead body. A faithful dog. How come he's here? When we carted you here, we took Mutt along too. He's been hanging around the mill ever since. How's he doing? A lot better now. I slipped him something good now and again when Uncle wasn't looking. He won't starve to death then. What does the miller have to say about it? He can't stand him. How's that? Every time he sees him, he starts shouting that he's a useless mouth to feed and that'll skin him. Jesus. And it didn't even soften his heart when Mutt brought a hare from the woods. He was happy to eat it, but it didn't change his mind. I could have a word with him. Mm, that would be a waste of time. Does he obey you? Me? <laughs> not much. He's got a mind of his own, and I'm just not strict enough. Ah, spoilt then. No, he just hasn't learned many commands. But he's well able to beg for a piece of meat. How long has he been with you? More or less since we came here. He runs off now and again, but he always comes back. Sometimes I don't see him all day. I think he likes to go wandering. So he's doing quite well then? Yeah. I'd keep him, but he reminds me too much of Tinker, you know? I don't want to think about Scalit. So I thought maybe you might take him with you? Me? I'm sure the two of you would get on great. He's a handsome fella and lovable. I'd be very happy if you had him. But we never had a dog at the smithy. We never needed one. Come on. He's got no one. I don't know. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, all right. I'll take him. He can keep me company on my travels. Thanks, Henry. Go and get him, then. He's sniffing around somewhere here. Hey, Mutt. Remember me? From Scalix, remember? You wanna go with me? Come on then, we'll get on like a house on fire. Follow me. Hey, lad! Don't you want a little wager? 